Okay, so you're going to notice when you open up the Grave Encounters folder, you're going to see a bunch of different After Effects projects here. Now, starting with number one, this is the Grave Encounters bundle. Essentially, these are all the comps, all the credit comps. Everything that you see in the video presentation is going to be stacked inside here. However, it is very heavy. Uh, you know, there's a lot going on. It's going to take a long time to load up. And it may even slow down your workflow because it's really packed. So what I did was divided the project up into eight different parts since there's eight different chapters, or in this case I call them lots from the cemetery, that are broken up one through eight. So uh, I suggest that even if you do have a faster machine, uh, if, you, if you're running anything from four gigs of RAM or even eight, uh, I would advise you not to use the entire bundle. Uh, but even at that, if you have a powerful machine and you can work really fast, even with something as heavy as this, I still think it's probably a good idea to kind of concentrate on each individual chapter, each individual lot. Uh, it's going to be faster for one, because there's a lot less contained inside the project folder. But also, uh, you, you know, you can see inside the original bundle with everything. If I drag down here, you're going to see that in the layout, it's pretty overwhelming. Okay, so there's a lot going on. But I did want to give you the options here. Now next you're going to see the Grave Encounters color presets. And you want to install these color presets so that you can use it for other projects. In order to install them, it's very easy. If you haven't installed presets before, all you have to do is go to your After Effects folder, be it a Mac or a Windows. In this case, I'm using a Mac. So if I go to my After Effects folder here, uh, as the same with Windows, you're going to see a Presets folder. And you just want to drag and drop that into your Presets folder. Now I already put one inside there, so when you open up After Effects and you go into your Animation Presets, you should see in your Presets your Grave Encounters folder. And inside there, everything's going to be laid out for you. So in that case, down the road, you can just get a, an adjustment layer and drag and drop a preset. And there you go. All right, so before we begin, let's look at how you can possibly optimize your After Effects for an easier workflow with this project. This is a heavy project. And it's not so much the 4K aspect, because in the test then that I did, between the 4K and the 1080p, we're not dealing with 4K raw. Okay, so it's a totally different story. We're dealing with the bit rates. And the bit rates that I use for the 4K versus the 1080p are essentially the same. And we're dealing with rasterized graphics, so that's going to eat up a lot of processing power. So let's look at a couple things that you can possibly do to better your workflow with this project. First of all, let's check a couple things in our After Effects preferences. If you go up top to After Effects and we go to Preferences, I'm going to start with General. Now on the left hand side we're going to see some uh, categories here and let's start with Previews. Now regardless of what video card you're running, if you're running an NVIDIA card uh, with Mercury enabled all the better but I still suggest that you shut off this enable OpenGL make sure it's checked off okay because you can run into some issues okay secondly I always suggest if you go to media and disk cache so make sure that every now and then you remember to clean the database that way it wipes out the the old cache and it allows for a better workflow and the memory multiprocessing now this differs for specific systems. Now on this machine here that I'm doing the tutorial on, I'm on a Mac Pro and this has 32 gigs of RAM. 
and you can see that I'm reserving four gigs for other applications. Originally, I did use this render multiple frames on checked on uh, because I did have uh, enough cores as well as a lot of RAM, so I thought I'd utilize my uh, processing cores. But I was finding from my situation, I was running into render errors and it was boggling down. My renders were actually taking much, much longer. I couldn't find any answers. I did a lot of research, uh, tweaking around for days and days and days. I really did a lot of tests where for me, and this is, this is not just uh, video high stuff. This is for uh, client work as well. Uh, checking this off, it just suited my system better. Now for another system I have with uh, just amount of, uh, the same amount of RAM, it's different. It, it renders much better and that's why, it, because it's a newer uh, Mac. So really uh, monitor this, see if it helps you checking it off or on. I can't say if it's going to help you or not help you, if it's going to make things faster or not. You really have to monitor that for your own system. I am just letting you know my personal experience so you might want to look into that now that's it now uh, the final thing i want to just quickly go over and you might have heard this one before i'm going to hit ok and uh, this is the after effects secret now you want to in this case hold your shift button down and keep it held down so i'm going to hold my shift button down i'm going to keep it held down so I'm holding the shift button down and I'm going to now go back up to After Effects. I'm going to go back to my preferences and I'm going to select General. Now I'm going to let go of my shift and you are going to see that at the very bottom you have a secret category that originally wasn't there. So you, again, you have to hold down the shift button at all times. Don't let it go until this box pops up. And you're probably going to notice if you haven't used a secret before that this is checked off well let's check it on if it's checked off check it on here disable layer cache and purge every one frame okay then hit OK now these are just some workflow tips to hopefully speed up uh, both your workflow as you work on the project it's not gonna create miracles but you may notice a difference uh, also hopefully this should help uh, speed up some of your renders Okay, so one final note in your workflow. Uh, you do want to really check out going up top to view and go to resolution. And, you know, we're dealing with 4K size. So you can see I have this at a quarter resolution. And in my 4K layout, it still looks really crisp. Versus if I go to my 720p, it's much more pixelated. Regardless, you know, for a faster workflow, you really want to go to your view, go to resolution, change your resolution right there. Or you can, of course, change it right down here in your comp right there. Now, when you're in the process of working in a comp, uh, some of the things you can do just to kind of speed up your workflow is I'm going to start from the top. You have your lens grind mixer. Uh, we have our light. You can always just shut that off you're going to see a lot of different nulls which are essentially just references to uh, things such as in this case uh, here's a reference for this tomb uh, here's another tomb null back here and these are reference points in case you wanted to place any other objects of your own uh, in that area in that specific area so that it tracks with your environment now also what we can do is this is really what's going to start to eat up uh, your speed so they're mats, you know, they're dust and fire debris and all that. And, and you may want those on there, but you don't really need to see them as you're working. So you can just shut those off. Okay, and that's going to help start to speed your, uh, your, your workflow up a little bit, as well as other little elements such as the ground pre-comp here, which is just, uh, you know, grass and dirt over the zombie and in this case maybe you uh, you're gonna keep the creeper but you know you don't really need to see him at the moment and you can also see that there's another creeper uh, lurking back here so you know you may shut him off as well and all of this stacked together eats up time so if we turn these things off as we're working or if you're trying to add your own elements into the shot 
and you're trying to get a feel, shut all these other elements off so that it does help you uh, speed up your, your workflow. Okay, and you're going to notice that it's going to move a lot faster without all those elements stacked on. And, and this is without any RAM preview. It's just going to move, you know, rather fast uh, with just some of the tomb titles right there. No mats. So again, uh, the same goes for, you know, the Dark Matters project, which was my first 4K project that I launched. Uh, my advice is always, as you're working, to shut off the mats. Those are going to eat up your, your speed as well as uh, your light layer and any other little pre-comps that you really don't need to have at the moment or at all for that matter. Uh, but if you something where you know you're going to keep them, just eye them out and work on adding your own stuff and it's really going to help speed things up. So when you open up the project, in this case I'm going to use the original uh, bundle pack which contains all 50 comps and all the credits. But as you can see, if you go into lot 1 through 8, they're all going to be organized the same, just less. So in this case, you have a comps folder, your credit comps folder, so all the credits, and whatever pre-comps exist in those credit comps. And then you're going to have your tomb titles, and these are going to be the titles that are placed on, on the tombs itself. And then you're going to also see a placeholders folder. So in many of these comps, I did place a placeholder as an option. If you didn't want to always have text and maybe you want to add some pictures, uh, I did add a placeholder switch there, as you'll see. So you have 20 different placeholders for videos or photos. And then number five, the various elements. This is just a few different uh, depth of field mats that are pointing in the project, the grass pre-comp, the flicker mat. And then you're going to see the zombie pre-comps versus the grave creeper. That would be the, uh, the dude coming out of the grave. And then the hands, the hand pre-comps. And number seven is the living dead collection right here. So we have ash mats, blowbacks, which are smoke blowbacks, uh, all the cemetery footage, fire elements such as fire dust and fire mats. So everything in the bundle is going to be contained inside here. And then we have the renders folder. In this case with the entire bundle, I do have the full layout as you can see here. So it's going to be essentially everything you see in the preview. It's about seven and a half minutes. Uh, in 4K, 1080p, and 720p. But I also broke them down into individual lots. So if you did decide to work in this uh, bundle pack here, and you were kind of breaking it down still from lot 1 to lot 2 to 3 to 4 to 5, 6, 7, 8, you, uh, you, know, you might want the option just to render out each individual lot. So I did that for you. So you have a 4K output. 720p, 1080p, and if I were to double click on, let's say, lot number one here, it's really just cut for you to uh, render out that individual lot. And do know, as you're looking through, uh, in this case, the entire layout, I did place some chapter markers here, which shows you which lot starts at what time, okay? So you can see lots 1 through 8 plus the credits. Okay, so in this example, this is lot number 6 project file. And you can see here you still have the same organized layout 1 through 8. Uh, just less comps and less footage. So it's going to open up a lot quicker. You're probably going to have a faster workflow. But you are going to see all the same settings. It's just more concentrated. Okay, so now let's take a look at the vast amounts of presets and controllers inside the bundle. So starting with the lens grime mixer, 
this is pretty cool. I think this could be a fun addition to just working with this this project. It's really a way just to kind of muck up your your footage, your lens. So when I highlight the mixer, as you can see here, and I go into the effects control, you're going to see 20 different uh, presets here that you can slide, such as dirt control. And as I pump that control up, you can start to see marks show up. And you can mix these up how you wish. So I may just do about 56% there. And maybe I'm going to add a little soap. So I'm going to go down the soap control. You know, you can get ridiculous. You know, you don't want to overdo it. But you can see here, you can really muck up your footage and, and uh, give it that kind of grimy texture. Moving down, you're going to see the sprocket control. And the sprocket controller, if you move this slider here, going to see it's going to give that type of uh, glitchy effect as if the film is coming off the sprockets. Now that's probably going to be a feature you might want to animate every now and then. As you can see, I did some uh, at certain points here. You know, for instance, when this starts to move, it comes off hinge a little bit. So play around with that. You're just going to really want a keyframe from zero and maybe bring the number up no, to two or three or negative two or three. And go down a half a second, bring it back to zero. So you see from zero. So that's the sprocket controller. Next is going to be the focus and weaving. So we can really just move our image in and out of focus. So we can animate the uh, focal point here to go out of focus, come back in. Next is the sprocket jitter. So if you were to play, for instance, with the chants, you can see that it's set to 0 0.50. If I were to bump that number up just a little bit, I'm increasing the value and the odds that the chances are that this frame is going to jitter more. Okay, so you can just see there it's starting to jitter a lot more than it was originally. And that's because I took this chance slider and bumped up the value. So again, you want to be a little bit cautious with that. You know, if you were to jump it up, maybe two, it'll gradually flicker like you see there. Next is going to be the exposure. So what we can do is essentially when we want to kind of overexpose this, we can play with our exposure level. So I can make a keyframe start at zero, pump up the value to something like 25. Let it go about a second to a half a second. Bring it back down to zero. We're just going to get this kind of a exposure flare going on. So you could tighten those keyframes in, make it quicker. Or if you spread it out. Next is a vignette, so you can turn that off or on right here. And that's just going to give you a little bit of a dark haze around the edges there. Now moving down to our presets. So just to quickly uh, check these out, if you want to turn on a specific color preset, all you have to do is just turn on this little eyeball switch. And this is something you're probably going to play with at the end of your render to kind of get the look that you want. The blowout is just going to kind of haze around the whites there. Something you would get. <clears throat> kind of a look that you get with some old film. And then we're going to have a darkness switch. 
So if I were to go to a piece of footage for a second, you're going to notice you have a couple darkness switches here. And of course you can modify these. If I highlight the darkness layer here, you can always just modify the curves or uh, the, the hue and saturation to kind of get the look that you want. I just gave you a good starting point. So if you want to check it out, you just switch it on. And you could always go to something like uh, curves here and bring, you know, darken it up a little bit more, a little bit less. We got darkness number two, which is more of a little bit of a blue tint. I have your morning dusk, your evening, your bleach bypass. Then you have a variety of different uh, black and white washes here. I gave you 10 of those. And moving down, you're going to have some old film washes. Again, the style is supposed to be kind of gritty and not clean, so that's why a lot of these washes are rather extreme. Give you that kind of old-fashioned zombie film if you want to do a black and white style or old color film. So play around with those. And I gave you a few of these little creep show comic washes. If you've seen the movie Creep Show, I have that kind of comic book style. And moving down, you are going to have uh, an enhanced switch. And this is just really going to bump up the value, kind of crunch up the blacks a little bit, make it a little bit sharper if you want to kind of make it stand out and not have it look so faded. And then you're going to have your dust switch here. And then your grain amounts. And then last, we have our Flicker Normal and Flicker Anamorphic Gritty. Now, this Anamorphic uh, Gritty Flicker, if I double click and go inside here, it's actually just, it was shot off a, a film projector using my uh, scope lenses. And you get these really cool streaks that happen. So, you know, it's essentially a real flicker, as you can see here. So I just add an expression here to loop it for the entire layout all right so seven and a half minutes running it just loops non-stop so if you were to turn this switch on it's just going to give you a little bit different look than the flicker normal which is really just built in after effects values that you know you can play around with the slider here and the more i bring it back you know the more of a washout the flicker is going to give me so you probably want to stay around, you know, I'd say about negative 45 is pretty good. And that's going to be a, a moderate flicker. The more extreme is going to bring you back to maybe about negative 80, negative 90. However, if I turn on the uh, flicker anamorphic here, You're going to see that it's a bit more extreme. You're going to get those streaks and that flare kind of pushing through the image. And you can control that uh, by going to the opacity. And if you want to just bring that down, uh, you can do so here by the opacity or bring it up, whatever you prefer. Okay, so change in your tomb title is very simple. You have a ton of different options uh, there's over 60 different uh, tomb titles that you can change and they're all done the same so in this case you're gonna see that I'm in lot number six and I'm in comp number 36 and we have this tomb here and the camera moves in if you've seen in the preview and the camera's always moving so every shot was uh, 3d tracked and if I go inside comp number 36 for a minute as in every comp, you are going to see this 3D track camera. And this is taken on the same camera values as the real camera that it was shot with. So therefore, when the camera moves, the title is going to move and look like it's attached to the tombstone. We know it's not. Most of these tombs are blank. We're just going to add our own titles. So we can do that inside the individual comp. I would, of course, tell you to go to the folder here, go to tomb titles and change it this way you can just double click on 
the folder here or back inside the comp you are going to see the tomb title right here so you just want to double click in it and in this case some are going to have more text layers than others um, now I did add these little ornament aspects in it so you can see if I turn these on and off you can change that just highlight the ornament and if you change the uh, the letter let's say a you're gonna see it's a different type of design I do B so whatever you like go through the alphabet you'll see kinda of some different designs you can play around with go back to the original and in this case so just changing the title that way and everything will be changed as simple as that okay so changing the credit comp is just as simple as changing the tomb text uh, you can either go into your credits folder as you see here into credit comps and just double click on any one of these whatever you're trying to change in this case number 10 or if you're inside the actual composition and here I am credit comp 10 I'm gonna double click there either way uh, inside these credit comps you're gonna see the lens mixer so you can you know add a little grime take your controllers just bump it up so you're gonna see this lens grime in every single one of your comps and inside here you're gonna see the uh, text which is uh, this piece here is just kind of a little lot number you can delete it or if you want to change it just go right here and change your text and you can double click now to change the center text here you're just gonna double click inside this pre comp and whatever you type will change right in the comp okay so I'm in comp number 37 and in a variety of these comps you will notice that below in this case the tomb titles you will see placeholders now you're not gonna see these in every single comp but the comps that you do see placeholders you do have the option to uh, change the tomb title we can turn that off right here and turn on the uh, placeholders okay so just look for the placeholders there and you can if you decide to uh, just drag and drop some video or photo inside these placeholders so if I were to go to uh, placeholder number nine for one second which is actually gonna be right in the middle here I'm just gonna double click and just drag and drop a picture on there it could be a photo or video uh, in this case I'm just going to right click go to transform and fit to comp and then when I go back into my comp there so again it's up to you but you will see the comps there with the placeholder option so remember you can just turn those on right there and I'm just gonna turn these back to the titles hopefully you like my little uh, left for dead pun right there now switching the zombies is really simple I uh, set it up so you can literally just drag and drop and if you want you can modify and tweak some of the brightness and all that to your liking uh, in this case we are in comp number 42 and if I uh, move down here for a second you're gonna see that uh, Walking Dead number seven is a pre-comp and, and I can simply just double click and it's gonna bring us into that pre-comp. So what we can do is go into our uh, Living Dead collection here and we can go into our Walking Dead and we do have a bunch of them. So I'm gonna go to Walking Dead number 15. He's kinda hunched over. Now I could uh, drag and drop. If I'm kinda playing around, I'll just drag and drop it above turn this one off just in case and uh, it's a little bit different so just go back into the comp and that's it and you can always just highlight this pre-comp here 
go into your effects controls and tweak around the exposure and the curves to get it to your liking. Um, but also when you go back and visit the the full layout with the grain and the wash and everything, you'll see it's going to blend pretty good. Now I'm going to go to comp number 31 for one second. And here's an example of, uh, you know, a creeper, as I call them. And there's only a couple of uh, creepers in this case. We have one that's uh, kind of this front angle, and then we have another one that's a uh, side angle. I'm just going to go into this Grave Creeper pre-comp here, double click, and it's going to show me my creeper. Now, if you were to replace it with your own material, you may just have to uh, re-key it in here uh, in case the, uh, the actual key I did for this comp is not going to match exactly the background that you have. So just remember that you'll want to go to uh, Effect and get your key light and add your key light inside here. But in this case, I'm just going to get this creeper and replace number one with number two. And I can always just highlight the layer, hold my Option button down, drag while holding the Option button down, and replace. So now when I go back to Comp 31, you can see there he is. And you know, just may have to move him around a little bit if you want to uh, line him up better. Maybe take some of this uh, ground and just kind of put it in the front here. Kind of hide his side there. And that's simple as that. Of course, you want to modify, probably change the color a little bit. If I were to highlight on this pre-comp, you're going to see that beyond the key light that's on there, you know, there's some saturation, so I'm desaturating the image a little bit, uh, adding some curves. So you could play around with that if you decided to replace with a different one, because you can see that there's actually a little bit of different shadowing. He's probably a little bit too bright, so you're going to want to knock down make that a little bit darker and uh, probably desaturate them a little bit more. All right, so let's use the example that you shot, you know, yourself or your friends, and you want to really place them in the environment uh, and replace the zombies. You know, easily done. It's just a couple uh, things you want to look out for. You're probably going to have to rekey your uh, image because it's going to be a little different. So I'm going to use a good example here drag and drop an image now you know if you didn't shoot it of course in uh 4k that's you know not a big deal you can certainly uh shoot in 1080p or even 720 scale it out i think you'll still see really good results we're going to use bandit my pup so you can see this is much different than the uh the zombie here and in the process of keying, we just simply want to highlight our image and we want to key out the background source. So I'm going to go up top to Effects, I'm going to go to Keying, and I'm going to get the key light. And you're going to see the screen color right here. I'm going to grab this little eyedropper, place it over some area in the green. In this case, I probably would use a little bit darker uh, portion of the green. Now you may want to turn your alpha matte uh, background on so you can go down here where it says toggle transparency grid and that way we can see the background. Now in highlighting the key light what I want to go to is this viewport here and I'm going to change it from final result to screen matte and what I want to do is really kind of crunch out the blacks and bring up the whites and get rid of this uh, gray fuzz here. So. I'm going to go into the screen matte category. I'm going to go to my clip black and probably squeeze that a little bit. I'll probably bring it up to about 35 in this case, and it might differ for your own footage. And then I'm going to go to the uh, clip white. Bring that up. So already, if I went back to final result, it's going to look a lot cleaner. Now in this case, I do uh, have this garbage mat, so what I want to do is just get my pen tool 
and just cut around the area here if you have this of course all right so now finally you know what you want to probably look into is the screen pre blur here and that's just going to get rid of that's just going to get rid of some of the pixelation that you see around the edges here And also, I'm going to go into my screen softness. I'm going to bump that up to about 1 or 1 1.5. That's just, again, it's going to soften in the edges. You can also play around with the screen shrink and grow. So if I were to bring this uh, number forward, you're going to see the edges are going to expand. And what we're going to want to do is bring that value down to about a negative, I would say, 0. Negative 0 0.4 is pretty good. That's just going to clean up the edges. So now when I go back into Comp32, she's black, so it's a little bit tougher to see, but I might scale her up a little bit. And then you might need to modify and tweak the colors and the saturation of your own footage if you decide to do that. So uh, in this case, let's get into renders. And you're going to see your render folders over here. Now, I am inside the full bundle. Uh, and I'll break into uh, separate lots in just a moment. But looking at the full bundle, you're going to see the folder up top, full layout render. And this is going to be the entire seven and a half minutes, pretty much everything you saw in the presentation, uh, all the comps, all the credits. You're going to have an option for 4K, 1080, 720p. And then moving down, I also divided the renders up into uh, each lot. Again, each chapter of the project, which you have eight of them. As well as just the credits. You know, it, it's a factor if you're working inside this entire bundle uh, where you have all 50 comps then you know you have a lot of options for render you can do the entire uh, layout if you wish or you could really start to break it down per lot so in this case uh, if you go into lot number one let's say and you decide to render it out at, at 4k now if I double click it's just gonna bring us into that area that we're gonna render for lot number one simple as that uh, but what I wanna kinda point out we did go over some of the tips to maximize your workflow to hopefully make this a little bit faster for you but I did want to note uh, what I found to be a little bit of a faster process in render times now you know I did give you an option to render on 1080p and 720p but here's what I think you probably will find to be a faster process for you if I'm in the full 4k render what I advise you try doing is let's say I'm gonna render this whole project out right now I'm in the 4k layout as you can see here I'm gonna go up top to composition make movie and now what I'm gonna do is go into the render settings over here and I'm gonna go where it says best settings and I'm gonna click on that and I can see that my quality is gonna be best and my resolution uh, my resolutions at full and I can see by that with the size it's going to be 4k however what I suggest you try and I think what you're going to get uh, where you're going to get really uh, faster renders as opposed to rendering from the 1080p uh, layout is you're probably going to see you're going to get even faster renders by going into the 4k and changing this resolution from full to half which as you can see here is still going to bring you to 2k and then from there hit OK and you may want to go to lossless, hit that lossless, and you can change your format. Uh, in this case, it's just I want to change it to something like QuickTime. Uh, hit my format settings and maybe do an H.264. Maybe I want to do an Apple ProRes if you're on a Mac or uh, what have you. Change it there. Hit OK. Now, if you want to resize it from there, you can always just click on the resize button here and change your resize uh, resolution here to let's say 3k 
or I can just hit this custom here and I can deliver it. And, and let's say I did want the letterbox uh, 1080p and I'm going to have letterbox cropped. I can just select the custom here to HDD, HDTV 1080. Switch it there. So you have the options. But in any case, more importantly, I did want to stress for you to really try rendering from the 4K and just change the resolution from full to half. And now just taking a quick look, I jumped into the project entitled Lot Number One. So this is just going to be the first chapter, which is just going to consist of uh, six comps and a uh, few credits. Now when you're inside an individual lot, it's a little bit more simple. You are just going to have the 4K, 720p, and 1080p uh, render options. Okay, so all of these 4K, 1080p, 720p are all going to have the uh, lens grime mixer. They're going to have the uh, sprocket jitter, the sprocket controls, you know, all the presets and everything is going to be there for you. So, same idea as, as if you were inside the full bundle, just simplify. So that pretty much covers all the in and outs of the Grave Encounters bundle. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. If you do have any questions, please feel free to ask me at any point. I'm always happy to help. And again, I make these bundles so that you can dig deeper into After Effects, hopefully learn a little something, and have fun doing it. So thanks again for ordering the Grave Encounters Living Dead bundle.